Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Accessible Games interview series. I'm your host, Aaron Spelter. Mobile Accessible Games is a group that is all about mobile accessible gaming. And through our interview series, we interview game developers, accessibility influencers, and accessibility advocates about the state of accessible gaming. This week, we're going to do something a little bit uh, special. I usually host and talk uh, with some of those different types of people about gaming. But I am going to have a guest host this week. His name is Michael Gray from New Death Gaming. And Michael is actually going to interview me about the Mobile Accessible Games Game of the Year. Uh, and we're going to go through the, uh, the run-up of the games that got close but didn't get the, the top spot. And then we'll talk about the top spot. So I'm going to turn this over now to Mike to host. And I am just going to be the person who gets interviewed. So, Mike, thank you for doing this for me. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate being here. Thank you for letting me do this. Well, Aaron, it is so good to speak with you again. Um, coming right off of our panel we did with Jesse Anderson and Liam yes. Irving and uh, you and me. And uh, now we are back again. And this time it's with Mobile Accessible Games. Uh, what is the official title of this uh, countdown? Ah, uh, just Game of the Year countdown. Game of the Year, yeah, exactly. So uh, thank you folks for joining us. Uh, so yeah, um, so why don't we start off a little bit and talk about what is the process involved with compiling these votes for Mobile Accessible Games of the Year? And correct me if I get any terminology incorrect, how does it work? How do you start this? And kind of uh, what yeah, makes you so, think of doing this? Yeah, so we, we do something a little bit um, unique. Um, you know, often game of the year is, you know, the game that came out this year and what was the best new game that came out this year. Um, I, uh, through mobile accessible games, every week I release a game review and try to find a game across many different genres that are is accessible for the blind and visually impaired community. Now, those don't always happen to be games that came out this year. Sometimes I'm finding a game that's really great and fun to play, but it's from seven years ago or three years ago. Um, and some of them are from, uh, from this year. So our compiled list um, of, of potential and available choices to vote on is from games that Mobile Accessible Games reviewed in the year 2022. So we reviewed 50 games that were uh, put up to the community of everyone who is you know, part of the uh, Mobile Accessible Games Facebook group community. And the community members voted on all of the games that were reviewed, what was their top pick. And each community member uh, has one available vote that they can cast for what they think was the best game from the games that were reviewed by Mobile Accessible Games in the year 2022. Amazing. So it's not like they get to vote for top fifth, fourth, third, second, number one. It's just they get one vote. So it's right. really very concise. Right. So the winner uh, gets the most vote and then, you know, the, the, who comes in second place got the second most vote. So, um, oh, that's, and that's great. And this is the second annual that's Mobile right. Accessible Game of the Year. That's right. Um, last year, um, the top winner was a game called Swarty Quest, which is a single player uh, role playing game uh, with you know, loads of different um, mechanics and gameplay types uh, within the game. You fight dragons, you fight monsters, you explore a, a very large map. Um, and the individual who created that game um, really worked with the blind community to create a, a game that would be fully accessible and you know all elements that you interact with that game and, and i was really impressed and over the uh, the course of the development of the game um you know he really every every week you know added something new and then made sure it was accessible and checked back in with the community and said is this working um and it is one of the few games only three games have ever gotten a perfect score uh, from mobile accessible games from a game review and Sporty Quest is one of those games that got an, an A plus rating, um, really because it's a great game, but also for all the effort that the developer put in towards uh, making that game accessibility and meeting the needs of the community. I love Sporty Quest, and for those of you who may not know, the developer is Charlie Seligman, and he is a one man show wrecking crew. Mm -hmm. he does an amazing job. He really brings the hand controls in combination 
with accessibility and combination. I call it the hands-on RPG feel that a lot of players haven't had in the blind and visually impaired community. He's very good, as you mentioned, uh, correcting accessibility issues and quickly sorting out any problems with the UI or any of the game play mechanics. And he, he uh, so it's such a big map, it's a 50 by 50 map, which any person who's played a game like that uh, and is using accessibility, it's very difficult because you don't want to have to swipe you know, through 250 squares to get to where you want to go. Um, he created a whole um, one auto travel system that makes it easier. You know, you find your spot, you pick it, and then over a series of turns, you can move there and the computer does it for you automatically. And then he also created, um, kind of leveraged off of something from a dark room, which is a, another great game, um, th where it has a kind of a legend, map legend that says, okay, you're standing in square, you know, X10, Y15. And then it kind of tells you what's around you and what its coordinates are from the things that are closest to the things that are farthest away from you, um, which again, helps you kind of uh, understand the world and where you are. So, um, you know, really, really um, great accessibility. So that's what one last year, same process, uh, we actually reviewed 60 games last year, um, and that was the, the top pick from the community members. Exactly. And um, one uh, little last minute comment on Charlie's system. Um, he does the system where you can actually move your finger and move from square to square. So it's just real world within the game, moving around, and you can just kind of like go everywhere and do everything. And of course, you have a system where you can just auto send yourself to whatever location you need to send to it's just so perfect um i had a question uh about sorty quest so sorty quest was the first uh, mobile accessible game of the year at that time you guys were called a different community correct yeah uh yeah our original name uh, when i created the group uh you know, not not knowing anything about creating a facebook group and what would be a good name uh we were actually called the Apple iPhone iOS voiceover compatible games Facebook group, uh, which was a mouthful. Uh, but it was great for keywords. Uh, you search any of those terms, we would come up. Um, but after we got quite a following and that that you know be, became a mouthful to say during interviews and, and things like that, um, I, I went with the mobile accessible games, which is kind of short and concise. It's We're talking about mobile games, talking about uh, games that are accessible, and we're talking about games. So, you know, it's a, Three, three words, all perfectly uh, efficiently used. Definitely. So this year, and, and Mag's Game of the Year, you had quite a few categories of potential winners for uh, top games of the year. Um, can you describe a little bit how the players in your group voted across a wide variety of genres? Yeah, it's, you know, it's... It's really interesting, um, you know, when I first went blind and I was looking at, you know, asking, you know, in blind support groups, like, what games can I play? I love games. It was, uh, you can play Dice World and you can play text adventure games. That, that's what the blind community has. Uh, that's kind of what I kept hearing it over and over again. And, and that's actually why I started the group was because I said, there has to be more available to us and I'm going to find those games and I'm going to share those with other people so that the answer isn't always uh, Dice World and and text adventure games, you know, people will start saying Swarty Quest and, you know, some of the other uh, other games that I reviewed. Um, and the voting really kind of proved out that, you know, as a blind community, just like any community, we have very diverse interests. I think there was so 13 different game categories that were voted for, um, you know, where some people said, you know, quiz games were my favorite or 2D adventures or 3D adventures or role-playing games or text adventures or memory games, uh, card games, board games. I mean, it really was, uh, you know, across the gambit of different choices. Um, last year, um, 10 different genres were, uh, you know, were represented in the voting. And this year it was 13. So, you know, people are hopefully uh, getting exposed to more and different types of games and, and finding, you know, their love for those games. So um, that's exactly what I was hoping through the group that we would really enlighten people and show people, um, you know, and expose people to a lot of different types of games that they can play. Excellent. So I guess with 
no further ado, I guess we should go ahead and move on with what all of you are here for yes. to our fifth, coming in at fifth place, yes. game of the year. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what did come in at fifth place? So fifth place was uh, a tie. Um, two games um, got um, the same vote. And, and actually uh, for fifth, fourth, and third place, um, these were all separated by one vote. So it was very, very oh, tight voting. Goodness. Yeah. Um, but these two were tied. So one of them was a quiz game. It's called Quizoid. And Quizoid is um, kind of like a who wants to be a millionaire style quiz game where you get asked a, you know, a series of questions, you have you know, lifelines and you know, pull the audience and 50-50, you know, you know, those sorts of things. But it kind of adds on where you kind of have some different game modes. So you can have the, the traditional ask 10 questions, you know, and as soon as you get one wrong, you're out. Um, but then it has you know, ask 20 questions and you just try to get as many of the 20 correct. You have a timed version, answer as many questions as you can within the time limit. And then there is um, a, a kind of a categories where, you know, let's just ask me all about music or ask me all about books. So it kind of, you know, puts a spin on the who wants to be a millionaire with some other uh, game options uh, there. So, um, you know, great game, great quiz game. Uh, you know, as I played it, you know, all through all those different categories, I, I never saw a repeated question. So it had a pretty deep bench of uh, available questions for you to choose from. Um, and, you know, just again, great, you know, you can pay, you know, in a few minutes or you can, you know, pay for a, a, a long time, depending on how long you want to sit down and, and play the game. The um, other one that tied with that, a completely different type of game, um, it is a zombie text adventure RPG. It's called Zombie Exodus Safe Haven. It's actually the second game in that game world, uh, the first one being just Zombie Exodus. Um, and it, it's very robust. It, it, you're living in a zombie apocalypse. You are trying to uh, you know, find a safe haven to live in, um, and you kind of can select many different types of bases that you're in. When you're in those bases, you're going to attract people and either make enemies or, or friends with those people. If you make friends with them, they kind of join your squad. And what I really liked about that game, um, kind of different than normal text adventures, is as you build up your community, you're kind of managing that community as well. So if you have 10 people in your group, you actually assign those 10 people things to do. You know, some are going to be guarding your base. Some are going to need to go out and hunt. Some are going to need to go collect water. Some are going to have to, you know, uh, scavenge for scraps, you know, metal or plastics or whatever. Um, some of them will go on intelligence missions. So it really felt like you were living in that world and, and really being the community leader um, as you kind of, you know, build up your base and then deal with the other factions that are scattered around the community um, that you face. So accessibility grade, it's a text adventure game. So uh, very easy of navigating to your, your choice of options. Um, it's about zombies, which I love. So every, anything that's zombie, uh, I play it and, and uh, usually enjoy it, but um, really, really great. It's, um, it's in, I think, part three um, of a- He releases five. quite a bit of content. He, yeah. Jim Totillo updates the game constantly. Yeah, when new side missions. He's just releasing new content, yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll introduce new side missions. And then this is, I think, part three of a part, uh, a five part arc that eventually you know, will compose the entire story. Yeah, that's a fantastic game. It's got, role, you can actually select the person to have a romance with. It has all the pronouns built into it. It plays like The Walking Dead, but it's completely accessible, customizable. The UI is rock solid. That is a seriously hardcore text-based roguelike. Yeah, and then actually, that reminds me, um, you know, you can choose at the beginning as you build your character, you, know, you can choose, you know, what your profession was, which will, you know, to kind of determine, you know, what is your intelligence or strength or, you know, those metrics that go in. But he also has this thing called um, challenges. So you can select, um, oh, I have to survive with a child. Um, I have to survive with a, a pet. Um, and Blindness. That, you can be blind. Yeah, you can that's be what deaf. I was going to. Yeah, you can be, be blind and deaf. Disabled. Yeah, yeah. so uh, different disabilities. And he said he specifically put in the, the disabilities because he had gotten such a great reception from the blind community be about his first games on the Exodus that he wanted to make sure that that community got to choose themselves in his next game of Safe Haven. 
Um, and you can, you know, you can be addicted to drugs or alcohol or have delusions. So there, there's just a whole bunch of things, um, as I said, that are challenges that uh, you know, nearsightedness, you know, just just all sorts of different things. Um, that oh, kind it of affects the effect. gameplay. It, yeah, it sure. affects. I played as a blind person, and it totally affects my ability to shoot people with a 44 Magnum. And I missed a yep. few shots, but uh, I just had to get a little closer and shoot the zombies. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, and just like like you could be, you know, oh, I'm addicted to cigarettes, and so if you, you know, don't take time out to smoke, you know, during you know the zombie apocalypse, then that affects you know how responsive you are and whether you have the jitters and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, really, really interesting um, things that you really feel like you're living in that world. So um, great game. I love, I love Zombie Exodus. Matt, amazing game. Yeah, Quizoid, I, I've had many beers playing that game with friends. Having It's a great party game, and th it's a great number five. I can't wait. So that's number five. I, yeah. What could be better than number five, but number yeah. four? So who comes in at number four? Uh, number four uh, is... Uh, to the dragon. Yes, that's right. Yeah, to the dragon. Yeah, I want to make sure I wasn't going to say out of order. Yes, to the dragon. No, no, cave. no, no, no. I got you. Uh, I got yeah. you. Uh, uh, so, to the dragon cave uh, came in number four. So, this is uh, a game that actually did come out this year. Um, I actually wrote a story about the the development team because it's a husband and wife uh, where the wife is uh, a blind individual, and the husband kind of um, loved first person shooters, and his wife never had a first person shooter that was accessible that she could play. And so he decided to you know, make a game, a first person shooting game, so that she could see what was great about first person shooters. So um, it's you know, really interesting. It's about a, a heroine. You know, uh, she's got blinded by a dragon. She's living up in you know, the top of a tower and her, her knight in shining armor comes to save her. But then he gets taken away by the dragon to uh, the dragon's cave. And she decides to bust out of the tower and go rescue her, her man. Um, and, uh, you know, fights all sorts of enemies uh, as she kind of goes through uh, and, and gets to the cave to rescue him. Um, it it kind of has the, um, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, swipe left, swipe right, to, uh, and then you get the enemy centered, and then you double tap to fire. It's kind of how it, how it does the shooting in that, that particular game. Um, really cheeky, some really, you know, they have like vampire sheep that attack you, you know, so there's just kind of some humor, good humor into it. And it really just a great story behind the developers and you know, the husband, wife and, and, and blind wife team. And they've also hired a lot of um, blind individuals to help with the development of the game, whether they're you know, beta testing it or doing some of the voiceover work. So, um, you know, really, um, really kind of a nice story and, and a different game where you don't get many too too many first person shooters uh, that are accessible uh, and this was a great one to play yeah they are definitely ready for the triple a market their voice acting spectacular the romance between husband and wife it's so incredibly cute i mean i feel that a husband making a game for his wife and his wife extensively testing it and putting back all that incredible good feedback and making it just an amazing game. They're just a perfect, perfect example of how the community can work well with developers, no matter what the genre is and no matter what the connections are and they can create to the Dragon Cave, which is really, really struck home in the hearts of many gamers in our community because it's cute, it's adorable. It's not your typical tropey princess is saved by the prince. It's a princess right. that saves yeah. the prince. And, you right. know, it, it's so Flips great. The it, yeah. Oh God, it definitely flips the script. And the dragon sounds and monster sounds are amazing. I mean, the work that the developer did on this game is fantastic. Yeah, agreed. Moving on to our third one, we yeah. come in with the iconic. Yeah, uh, Cir yeah Circus Masters Revenge, which again, uh, interestingly, another first person shooter. And um, I, I think people are excited. Year of first person shooters. It's, it's a year yeah, back, of most yeah. successful games. Yeah. yeah. Back to back first person shooters. And I think that's because there aren't too many that are out there. So I think once people get a good first person shooter that's accessible, they're pretty excited about it. Uh, now, Circus Masters Revenge uh, did not come out this year. Um, it, it's you know been out on the market for a, a little while. Um, Joe Quirk is working on uh, Chapter 3 to be released. Um, and you're basically, uh, again, you, you play a blind guy who's kind of walking down the road. He stumbles across a, uh, a circus that's come into town. 
he goes to the circus uh, only to find out it is a you know a circus full of killer clowns who exactly. are coming after him and stalking him and he has to defend himself and now this does a little bit different because this uses kind of like the gyroscope in the phone where you actually are spinning in in uh, 360 you know uh, around in in your room so you're not swiping with your finger you're actually with the phone turning to the left or turning to the right or you know turning a full 180 degrees so you can hear the sound of the zombie out of uh, you know both ears and then you know fire or uh, you know, swipe at, at the, the the clowns to kill them and he has you know many different types uh, the voice actor of kind of the ringleader who is sending all these killer clowns after to get you know out to get you is you know uh, really well done voice acting and and you know some humor in there oh, as yeah, well exceptional yeah, yeah. so uh, you know that's a, a first person shooter done a little bit different way um, and again you know I give Joe is a um, a blind individual uh, and he again kind of wanted to create a game that he enjoyed for the blind community and he's put a lot of time a lot of effort and a lot of you know heartache as well into um, putting out a, a really great game so you know I put a lot of props to, towards Joe and the efforts that he's put forth. Yeah Joe Quirk has done a lot for the community he's created a genre I mean who knows what's next we'll get some bullet heavens and we'll have some all kinds of uh, shooters going on here between to the Dragon Cave and uh, to Circus Masters Revenge Love these shooters, and as I said, Joe's done a lot of work. I love what he's done with his games. He he, he just cuts loose. He just lets it play. He, he throws it all. He doesn't. He leaves everything on the field when he when he creates a game. And as yeah, you really? said, he's in his laboratory working on the newest uh, version. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's a great guy. He he actually introduced me to a lot of different people in the community that uh, you know I've since interviewed and. You know, made a lot of a lot of connections for me, so I really appreciate him and, and you know helping me kind of get uh, up and started when I first you know met him and said, "Oh, I want to start interviewing game developers and accessibility influencers." He he knew quite a few people and put me in touch with. Them. Oh yeah, he's done a great job. He's a great entrepreneur in the community for the games uh, that the visually impaired love to play. He definitely has an insightful mind toward what genres we want, what kind of gameplay we want, using those things like the gyroscope filter to the phone. He just finds these innovative ways to make his games extremely fun to play. And if you haven't played his game with a set of really good headphones on and yeah. spun around in an office chair using that gyroscope, yeah, that's how, yeah I've done that too. Yeah. You, you so definitely fun. when you know when you get done and you put it down and you're like, oh, okay, I know the door is right in front of me and the door is nowhere in front of you. You really lose. Oh no, no, it's not. You, know, no, you, you not totally lose where you are. Close. <laughs> uh, the the spinning in a chair is a good like a because again you can kind of really lose where you are in space. So you either have a, a you know if you're gonna actually stand up and do it, you know make sure you have a good clear space to do it. Um, I did find sitting at my office chair um, and just using that to spin around was a good way to you know stay contained but you know be able to spin around quickly and you know not stumble or anything like that. So little, yeah, exactly. little, yeah, little pro tip for you. Yeah, don't spin at your desk like me and knock your coffee across your desk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. Hands in. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. We're coming up, folks. We're halfway there and farther. Or We're coming up to uh, number two. Number two. Yeah. So number two is big. This is big. Yeah. Big, Huge. big game I, um, came out this year. It's called Evidence 111. Um, it is a two two well three D audio adventure type of game. Um, cinematic now. Yeah, the cinematic. New cinematic RPGs are hitting the, the community. Yeah. yeah, and it's um you know to give a little background on the story. You're basically a um, a uh, constable in in the UK, and uh, you get a phone call from somebody who's bringing up something from your past to try to blackmail you. Uh, they draw you to this uh, hotel um, that gets kind of um, you know, uh, what's the word? Kind of uh, cut off because of a storm. And oh, while, yeah, it's very creepy, very yeah. sketchy. You will, and, you will have to get a blanket and wrap yourself up. It's some scary yeah, storytelling. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, so you always have like the sounds of the, the storm, you know, and the thunder in the background, and you end up stumbling across a, a mystery while you're stuck at this hotel, wondering who at this hotel is your blackmailer, and then you know, and then this secondary like other mystery that's happening. Sound quality is great. Uh, I forget what they said. They had something like, you know, you have like seven audio tracks that are going at any time, whether you, you know, it's the sound of your feet uh, or, you know, 
that some conversation that's going on in the background, which you actually want to listen to because it will give you clues on stuff or the person that you're primarily talking to or the voice of, you know, the, the character that you're, is the protagonist. So it's just a lot of ambient sound and music, you know, so I forget what they said, something, something like seven to eight tracks that are always going uh, of all the different sounds to play that game. And what I was really impressed is if you want to talk about voice acting in a game, the voice acting was phenomenal and really stood out to me when I, you know, when I played the game. And so I asked, you know, the developer, I got a chance to interview them and they got some real actors. I mean, they got, you know, Emmy and Grammy award winner or nominated uh, actors um, who were in the TV show Wheel of Time and the movie Gone Girl, um, you know, just, you know, some real high quality actors to actually play the voices and the characters in that game. So that, you know, sometimes you get those games and, you know, you, you got your buddy to do the voiceover and it, it doesn't sound natural and it's not that great. You know, uh, this this was at a, a real good level of uh, voiceover work. Um, so real interesting oh, yeah. story, Very great, yeah. great binaural sound. You know, again, wear headphones when you're playing this game um, and, you know, a, a, a branching story. And then even things like, you know, it has great replayability. Like if you decide, well, you know, do I go talk to this person first or do I go to the bar and get a drink? Well, if you talk to that person first, you'll hear one thing from them. If you go to the bar and then you talk to them, you hear something completely different, um, you know, because there might be commenting on an event that just happened or, or whatever. So, um, you know, you can really go and you know play that game over again and kind of approach it, you know, from a different angle and and you know, you know, not you know step A B C, but try mixing it up and you actually get different dialogue and different story reveals. It's exactly well. We're talking evidence one eleven. The branches are just absolutely fantastic. So many different ways to go. The atmospherics are just really cool. Yeah, just the storm the is sound, really good. Yeah. The branches scratching the windows. Right. You, somebody stepping on the tail of a cat. You know, you right. got those sounds yeah. that are just and the multiple soundtracks layered so perfectly on top of each other it gives you such an immersive feel. It's almost, it's it's the new cinematic movie quality audio, completely accessible games that are really exciting. We perhaps will have a little time to talk about a few more honorable mentions if we do get around to that. But yeah, it's, the, it's not the first, but certainly, wow, we've taken huge steps with Evidence 111. Yeah, I, I think what they really showed there is, is two things. First off, the voice acting really matters, right? Um, right. So, so good voice acting really pulls you in or pushes you out, you know. Um, and then the second is the binaural sound and those layer tracks really pulled you into that world as if you were really there because it, it was so, you know, it wasn't it didn't feel flat or tinny or, you know, or, or just mono, you know, just hearing one thing like, oh, the storm's going. So everything is cut out. And now now I hear the voice, but now I don't hear the storm. You know, what I mean, it, it, it really um you know pulled you in that way and again if if you know the windows to your right and as you said the, you know the scratching on the window from the thing you know you kind of move away from it it's you know sounding farther away you know and it, it just really kind of again pulled you into that that world so really really good game um, really excited by what they did there again the, the sound quality when you when you head out of the hotel for part of the story and you're actually in the storm uh, the sound quality was excellent. I, like, I don't know how they recorded that. I mean, that sounds so real. Um, really, really, really great job. So, um, you know, they're working on more games. So I, I'm excited to see what else they come out with. Um, and I hope that people, uh, they, they told me they got a, a couple actors from Wheel of Time, um, which if you haven't seen is a great show um, based on a, a series of books. Uh, the actors were recording or, or filming in Prague, which is where this developer is based. And, you know, I guess they had some downtime between, you know, shoots and uh, they they got a hold of them and they said, oh, sure, we'll come over and do your voice acting for you. So I hope Wheel of Time Amazing. stays over there so that they, they keep using these voice actors because they were great. Oh, they do work well. They all work well together. It's done so exceptionally. The professional quality is just above anything I've really heard in a game. And this, folks, is a game. It is... You can make choices, you can make decisions, you can bring yourself down the wrong path, the right path. The 
accessibility is phenomenal. First time I've ever played an audio game where I wasn't completely blown out of the water by the controls. I'm usually just hopelessly terrible at yeah. audio controls. This one yeah. did it correctly. It works. It's yeah. clean. The other thing, you know, to make sure if you if you play this game, which I, I do recommend, is there are 11 different endings. So don't wow. you know, play. Yeah, don't play through and be like, oh, that's the story. That's it. I mean, you can get 11 different endings um, through that game. And, and I haven't I, I got quite a few. Um, you know, I think I got seven or eight. So I, there's there's still three or four that I, I haven't been able to figure out how to how to get to. that are still out there. So it's like uh, playing Clue. It's yeah. almost like playing Clue, you know, um, yeah. I don't know if you're a fan of Clue, but it's like playing yeah. Clue, you know, Perfect. maybe. Who done you know, it? So with what? Where? Yeah. With where? Why? How? And, yeah. and it is a bit, uh, yeah, reminds me of uh, that movie, um, the you know, something Onion or something. It's on Netflix. Oh, right? Glass Onion? Yeah. Glass Onion? Oh, yeah. I love that movie. I love it. So good. Um, yeah, of course, with stupid body, folks, of course. Uh, but yeah, Aaron, I, that is a fantastic game. And I'm really surprised that the group, MAG voted that up and it just came out. Usually you have to wait a couple years yeah. in the community to start getting some traction in our community. But yeah, when no, it's it, this good, you know? Yeah, it got some um, instant popularity. I mean, uh, I got a chance to play the game in advance. I got to interview the people in advance of it coming out. So I, I had an interview and a review that went out you know, the, the day that the game went live. So uh, hopefully a lot of people found it in the community through my review. Um, uh, that's my, my wish and my hope. Um, but yeah, the, the, it seemed to get a lot of traction. A lot of people loved it. So, and, and a lot of people you know talked about it and I think other people checked it out and enjoyed it. Um, I even had, I remember one person who was voting, uh, they, they did their vote and they said, oh, I just played Evidence 111. Can I change my vote? <laughs> so, oh, nice, yeah. nice. I love that. Yeah. No, you may not change your vote. Yeah, I, I let them. Right? Yeah, oh, let them, let them. you're so sweet. <laughs> yeah. uh, you let them get away with it. Well, folks, that's how Aaron is. Aaron's a big softie. Yeah, he's I am a softie. He's M-A-G. He's very kind. He's very kind. You, you, you are so kind. You know, uh, He will definitely take care of you, M-A-G. It's a great community. There's, there's no toxicity. The people are great. People uh, definitely demand a higher standard of community in MAG. So, uh, you know, little mini commercial, swing by, join the group today. I'm in there. You can come find me. There you go. Just, you know, spamming my local yep. playthroughs of all the greatest and latest games on New Def Gaming. Yeah, we do Soon have a call. Something different. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, we do have quite a few, um, you know, accessibility content creators as well as game developers who are also part of the group so you you can get some of the news directly from those people yeah exactly yeah swing by mag and of course folks we have to keep going because it's time right, number one it's should i drum roll time. number drum roll. one with the uh, that's not how we you don't use that expression number one coming in as game of the year mobile accessible games of year aaron spelker is drum roll yeah. Uh, it is Lost Vault. Uh, oh. So Lost Vault um, edged out Evidence One Eleven. It was it was pretty close. Um, Swarty Quest, which won last year, won you know far and wide. I just blew everybody else. It wasn't even close. This was actually right. pretty pretty close. Um, so uh, Lost Vault got the top spot, but um, only by a, a, a few votes over Evidence One Eleven. Um, again, it's an RPG, a role-playing game. Um, so there's kind of a trend that would see that the community loves uh, role-playing games at, over at sure. mobile accessible games. Uh, this one is, um, well, well, kind of Sporty Quest is primarily a single player type of experience for the most part. Um, this is a little bit more um, kind of community interaction. You, you join a clan and you fighting with your clan on different missions. You can fight uh, other players in an arena, but you also kind of build up your own character, um, fight your own you know, missions, if you will. You're, you're kind of ex exploring these vaults and moving your way down the levels, uh, fighting monsters um, until you can clear the vault uh, and you know, move on to the next one. Uh, and lots of customiz customization, not only on your character, on their individual stats, um, but also on the all the different weapons, so many different weapons, you know, just base weapons that uh, and, and armor that uh, Camille Radkowski has uh, created for the players. Um, but also, you can augment those with 
um, different kind of uh, gems that can boost the strength or the agility or the luck of, of that particular weapon. And what's kind of really interesting too is, you know, I play kind of a, a, a ranger uh, type of character. And so the weapons for the ranger are ranger weapons. Like I don't get a wizard staff or a sword. I never get any of those things. I just get things that I can use. Uh, you, Michael, also play that game. Uh, I think you're. I love. You, oh you're. God, you're a, I'm in love. I play Lost Vault every day. I play yeah. for hours a day. And you're every like day. a. You're a, a druid. druid, right? Right. So you I'm have like wands and stuff like that that you get. I have a staff. When you My helmets are always magical base. I don't get any of the cool baseball bats and none of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I use my magic and and boy, I do some toasting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, also Lost Vault's got that PvP era aspect, right? Yes. That PvP yeah. and that world boss. You can fight world bosses. And yeah. I agree with you about the itemization. Um, the itemization is amazing. The customization is amazing. The UI is rock solid. It's got sound effects, which Camille Rykowski has added. Mm -hmm. It's got that community, so you can join a clan. I'm a clan leader of clan... Uh, blind uh you know swing by we're mm. always full though we're we're very popular now but uh yeah we we're both in a clan together we have a lot of fun uh, so we also have something in that thing called we fight certain vault bosses like your whole clan can fight a vault boss together yeah and the, the reactor and, bosses right you're talking about exactly and Camille just added a full combat log, folks. So the thing that I wanted, one of the things I wanted the most was to know exactly how the battle went. How did, what kind yes. of damage did I do? Right. Well, he put it in there. It's in there yeah. now. So it's printed out. You can write it out. You can minimax yourself to death. You could just go through the high and go, okay, Aaron just did 113,000 points of damage. You know, this person just did X number of damage. And you can totally find out exactly how you're doing. Right. And you can change your equipment. You can go to strength. You can swing over to agility if you want a little dodge. You can go over to endurance if you want some PvP stamina. You can swipe over to uh, intel if you want to have a little bit of protection against magic effects. He's got these things called runes, which you unlock at level 60, which is another whole set of gems that you get inlay your equipment with, yeah. which is yeah. fantastic. That, that is what's really great. I, I think that's what keeps people playing that game is... As you level up, um, and, and and getting to level six, it takes a while. I mean, probably six months, you know, five, six months. Oh, it takes a while, yeah. Yeah. Um, but at every five levels, something new unlocks, you know, whether it's a new building that you can, uh, you know, now generate you daily gold or, um, you know, uh, you know, get you uh, eggs that you can incubate for your pet or, you know, uh, you, you know, as you were saying, as you get up to sixty, you know, you get these ruins with runes, which are you know extra things that you can add to your your weaponry and your armor. Uh, th just every five levels or something, so you're, you're always kind of like, oh, I'll just keep playing to like see the next thing that opens up. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. There's and a then trap. yeah, and then you with your weapons, you know, every time you level up, uh, now it's dropping higher level weapons, and so you you also have this incentive that. Oh, let me change out that you know level forty five uh, you know bow with uh, you know uh, a level you know forty eight uh, crossbow yeah, yeah, yeah uh, exactly. and let me add let me change up you know that was a you know, that crossbow I had was a uh, was uh, you know luck and now I'm going to make this other one more strength based you know for whatever reason um, and then the other thing with um, the points that you spend on your endurance and your luck and your strength and your intelligence and, and that thing I, I think is really unique too because it's, you know some role-playing games it's like oh you have you know you just leveled up you have five points you know distribute them um this is kind of like constantly you you as you fight the monsters you earn gold and you can spend the gold to um, increase those various metrics so you know like my uh you, you know uh, agility level because i'm a ranger so that's what i'm supposed to concentrate on it's something like six thousand um oh and, yeah yeah you're i've seen your numbers they're right. they're kind of off the chain they're very right. high they're, and then strength isn't really used by the ranger so that's sitting really low at like 500 um but you know every time you play you're like all right i've made some money let me, let me up this a little bit more and add 20 points more to my agility and keep going you know up and up and up on that so you're always spending you're not waiting around to you know uh you know 
customize your character and change them up or change out your gear, you know, you can always be doing something. And I think that's what kept people coming back and keeps people coming back to to Lost Vault. Um, it has a it has a yeah. ranking system as well. So you know, when I started, I was you know probably like number thirteen thousand, and now I'm you were you were dirt. Yeah, um, and now and I'm now like, you're not now. Yeah, I think I'm 900 or something. Or yeah, you're thousand, up there. Thousand. Now you're in the three digits level now. Now yeah. you're a player. Yeah, 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 you're up there. What are you? Do you oh, know what rank you are? Uh, you're, I'm you're 730 me. something. I've been getting knocked back down. There's some, there's some really, you're, you know, your ranger class has been just knocking me into dirt just recently. I have not, I cannot beat a strength based class right now. They are just owning me. Like one hit, I'm, I'm taking like nearly, like 150,000 points of damage. I'm like, ah, I don't even have that much health, you know? So my my damage um, deflection, you, my damage mitigation is zero on a Druid. A Druid is what we call your typical magic using glass cannon. Now, if you let me sit around, I will destroy you. But if you don't let me sit around, I'm done. I, I just get blasted. You gotta, you gotta um, uh, boost up your luck so you get the first first uh, oh I, I always get the first hit off but i can't kill you all because oh, your yeah. defense is so high and uh, so folks another good thing i want to mention about lost vault is it's not just a bunch of bo a boring number uh, mind you this is your best way of playing a game like war to warcraft because this is the quintessential blind visually impaired mmo it's a completely worldwide community of people there's a total community there you've got discord you've got a chat You've got in-game letters you can see. Your clan can share things among each other. You can attack other clans. You can communicate with your clan. I send my clan very lovely messages when I have time. Very and I talk about things like, yeah, like, hey, we're doing this today, folks. We're going to be attacking the reactor boss. Or, hey, happy birthday. You, you can bring yourself into this game in so many ways. And it's not just adding up numbers. You are doing amazing things. Like you can customize, you can, you can hit toward luck. Like maybe you like to surprise your opponent a little bit more, or maybe you want just straight up static PVP endurance. It really allows you to go any direction you want. And it's not just adding numbers. It's not linear that way. You can really move around and customize in an amazing way that makes you feel like your character is extremely unique. And don't forget, it has a talent tree with hundreds of talents that you can just surprise your opponents with and blow them away by just, you know, every, like when you get to level 50, 50 you unlock yeah. the talent tree, right? You've, you've enjoyed that, right? You've liked the talent yeah, tree. Yeah, it, it adds a different component. What, it, what really surprised me too, or, or I'm really impressed by, is the keeping the balance all in sync. So I think it's hard enough to create balance when you, you, you just have some basic thing, but then you throw on, oh, you can change this up by adding, you know, gems and, you know, increasing- And the runes. Yeah, and, and ruins, and runes, as well as now the skill tree where you can, you know, pick something where you say your, you know, your your skin is hardened by 10%, so damages, you know, dam physical damage is down by 10%. Um, you know, to put those things in, especially since some of those things he's added on after the game was already created um, and not break the game, it's been really impressive. It. Yeah, yeah I don't know really how impressive. it is impressive. How does he do it? How does he, he did... not break it? <laughs> yeah. And and you also have, so you have, um, as you play the game, you have your own shelter that you're building up, you know, where you have different buildings that give you, like I said, gold or you know, generate you an egg or experience or give you water that you need to go out and explore the wastelands um, uh, and give you uh, food and uh, oil. Um, but then you also have your tribal community and fortifications, which has its own buildings, which will give you like, you know, more generated cash or more generated experience. And, and so working collective as a clan uh, is really helpful as well. And it, again, all those things kind of change your performance. And it always kind of impresses me how, uh, how he doesn't break the game by you know, adding those different features in. Oh, it's amazing. He sends you letters and in his, the people, as a dev, you get an automated letter to let you know when new updates are coming in. I've, all, I've gotten a few letters. You've gotten a few letters. Um, you can just add people to your clan. You can search their name. Like you said, it's got a rating system. 
Uh, you can work with your clan to build toward goals. He just added the new altar, which is a new cool thing for clans to have, which you could sacrifice equipment of a certain quality and it builds up this really super robot that helps defend your base from um, reactor bosses. You can donate to your tribe with cash, bottle caps, and he's not greedy about any of the currency. So he doesn't let you just pound the game with infinite money and you have to earn it. You have to come back every day. You have to come back each week. You have to build up your clan. You have to build up your particular character class and, and, and here, you just can't buy it. Yeah, and here's a, a great thing about the game too, is you can play that game completely free if you want. I happened to buy a one-time kind of starter pack that gave me a little bit more room in my backpack to store things, but you don't have to do that. Um, and no, you, can, you don't. You, know, you can just enjoy the game for free. So it is not a pay, pay to play game. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to do some stuff, like, like I said, I just want some a little more inventory management. I, I paid the one-time purchase for that, which was perfectly reasonable. Um, oh, it was worth it. I bought yeah. two. I was under. I mean, you could buy like me. I bought the extra package. There's a, there's like an eighty dollar package. Uh, not eighty. It's like thirty dollar. Uh, you can get a bunch of bottle caps. I spend bottle caps like wild, so I had to have that package. Uh, I've also. He also makes it so that all your secondary accounts, by the way, folks, he's so generous, Camille Warkowski, when you buy a package like Aaron was mentioning for extra backpack space, all your 50 other characters you can have, he's that generous. You can open up up to so many extra characters. They all get your backpack upgrade for free. That's unheard of in MMOs. Usually you have to pay for everybody with the exception of maybe a mount or something, which he does have in the game, folks. He has mounts, he has pets, uh, his, he has crafting. You got a scrap pile where you can create anything you want, upgrade equipment, work on it. You got enhancements. He has energy drinks, so you can boost yourself with all these really impressive energy drinks. Okay, of course, the second. pets are really cute. Yeah, and you have the full, like Aaron said, you got the full um, shelter oh. where you're fighting away the apocalypse. Yeah, always, always something to do. And um, I uh, am in negotiations with him right now to do an interview. So hopefully you'll get an in-depth behind the scenes of Lost Souls. Oh, yeah. that'll come out in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, I, I mean, that is, swing by there. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's how we got to, uh, you know, Lost Vault being game of the year. It, it's community voted by the members of the Mobile Accessible Games group. And, uh, you know, they picked what they thought was the best game. And, you know, that was they Lost Vault this year. And uh, you know, lots of great games. Um, some, you know, a, a good portion of them came out this year, but you know, some other ones that uh, have been out for a while uh, that did well as well. Any last minute honorable mentions? Um, no, I was a little surprised um, that the there's a couple games that I thought were quite good. Um, a Bard's Tale, which um, Warlocks of Larger Fern. Yeah, War Warlocks of Larger Fern, which kind of has a. Um, uh, turn-based grid uh, battling um, mechanic to it, which I thought was kind of great. Um, could have, you know, kind of was like, uh, you know, a little bit more on the beginner side of, of those type of turn-based um, strategy fighters, but definitely you could see where it could go. Um, and I think it was a great launch, launching point for, uh, you know, developing an accessible game in that particular genre. Um, you know, the other one was a dust light story, which is a 3D oh, yeah. uh, action adventure. Um, it, it was short because it was kind of more like a proof of concept. Um, you know, it was kind of chapter one of I think what's supposed to be six chapters of the overall story. Uh, so maybe that kind of hurt it in the voting, um, uh, because it was it was such a short experience, but great binaural sound, great world building in that. Um, so uh, two great games didn't make it on you know the top five. Um, but you know, I, I recommend those as some great games to play as well. Probably Eldrum next year too, because Eldrum is fantastic. That is a, a game that is on my 2023 games to play, so that will be up for voting. So, yeah. Well, that pretty much wraps up what we're doing here today, folks. Um, again, my name is Michael Gray, and you can come catch me at New Def Gaming, which will soon be having a name change. We'll talk about it soon. Swing by my channel updates. I'll let you know what's going on. Uh, and this is Aaron Spoker, the group leader, creator of Mobile Accessible Games, top five games of 2022. Aaron? Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much for hosting for me. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.